Every angler has a bucket list of must-see fishing destinations. For Jake Romanak, the historic Columbia River in the Pacific Northwest sat firmly atop his personal bucket list of walleye destinations. Imagine catching walleye after walleye after walleye along the historic Lewis and Clark route to the Pacific. Jake's dream of fishing walleye on the Columbia River came true thanks to Austin Moser of Austin's Northwest Adventures. The fishing was fabulous, and the way our boys caught them, well, you'll just have to see it to believe it. So generally, these fish are going to be a little bit deeper right off the bat in the morning, and uh, and they'll work their way up, you know. Gotcha. So as the, as the day warms up, so we're going to fish right on the edge, in about 34 feet of water, and it's like 40 to 60 over there. So we're going to pitch along the edge our jigs. A lot of times I got guys going both ways, but this side of the boat does better in the gotcha. morning. It don't feel like a monster, but it feels like a nice one. With weather like this, it's March. Where we come from in the Midwest, it's still very cold at home. So oh, yeah. this is the warmest I've seen since uh, since the fall. So you didn't lie to me, Austin. It was literally your first cast. It was so. my first cast, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's a decent that's little nice fish. fish. Nice. A little chunker. Nice that's good it's a good size. start. Yeah. You can see that this is a male, and he's kind of milking out right now. Uh, they're getting ready to spawn, and some of these these uh, younger males are uh, they're real ripe right now. So um, they're hungry. We're fishing on the edge of the drop off, next to a feeding flat. We're looking for some big females for this show, but these are some great little males. I think it was nine hours of travel to get here yesterday. We got in late tonight, or uh, late last night. We got in, and uh, we're working on very little sleep. But this is my second cast this morning. And uh, it's a good one. This is a good fish, Austin. I got Austin putting fish back. This is doing that stereotypical big wall ideal. Actually, it's a snag Oh, I see it's a it. Snag nice fish. fish. Hooked a little funny. Yeah, hooked a little funny, but. Still a good fish, and they're all going back. You know, one of the things is, is when you're in a lot of river environments, and this is, is nothing different, is there's a lot of fish down there, um, but that's a river fishing environment. You'll snag some, you'll catch some, the ones that you snag, you're putting back. You know, on this week's episode of Fishing 4-on-1, I got the call from my buddy Austin Mosier. He gave me a call and said, hey Jake, we're catching a pile of walleyes on the Columbia River. And for me, it's always been a bucket list trip for me to come all the way out to Washington and fish the Columbia River. Ever since I was a little kid, I've always wanted to fish here. And so when Austin started sending me pictures of these beautiful walleyes, um, you know, not giant walleyes, but just thick, healthy walleyes and lots of them. And then he said, hey, by the way, Jake, I'm catching and pitching jigs. I said, all right, we're booking our flight and we're coming out here to see you, Austin, because this is just an incredible fishery, an incredible scenery. I mean, it's about, I would say, the most beautiful area that I've ever caught a walleye in. So it's pretty hard to beat the Columbia River up here by the Grand Coulee Dam. So here, I try to cast either straight out from the boat or a tiny bit downstream because what will happen in this current is your jigs will drag and you'll get a loop in your line 
um, because of the currents pulling the line down. So you gotta keep working that jig to get it, as I would say, around the corner um, to get your line straight behind and then you can work it on the bottom as you do that. If you cast upstream, it'll end up dragging bottom and you're looping your line. Your line will be down there, but your jig's up there. Pretty soon you're hung up, so uh, it should be good to go. And we're just barely, for me, I'm just casting them out as far as I can and I'm just gonna let it hit bottom and I'm just gonna lightly lift it. Basically, we're just dragging them across the bottom. Slow presentations have been the key. Stand down nice. Oh, that's a better fish. Oh, buddy. That's, look at that, man. The jig's gone. You're telling me you need a stinger hook. What is the point when they suck them in like that? <laughs> Holy cow. There's a fish. Woo! Now, that's kind of what we're looking for. Let's pull him out of here, Austin. <laughs> that one's got some girth to it. Yeah. Wow. You know, we're gonna talk more about our presentations, the stinger hook and stuff, but yeah. right now this morning they're just chowing it. There's no yeah. question. There's really no point in the stinger hook when they're gonna eat it like that. That's what I came here for though, buddy. I know. Put my hands on a fish like that, so. Special considerations provided by Bill Lewis Lures. Special considerations are provided by Procure. Ruthlessly effective bait sense. Absolutely pile drived it, buddy. There was no question that was a bite. You know, this style of fishing, I've, I've pitched jigs my whole life. But this style of what Austin's got going on is a little bit different. And he was literally just kind of walking me through it as I'm picking this up and learning as I go. And uh, we're sitting there talking with one another and it's a thunk. And that's what everybody loves about walleye fishing, that thunk in the line. That is why we do it right there, this rod and hand style of fishing. And he about ripped the rod out of my hand when he smacked it. There you go. Oh, eater size there. Yeah, on the stinger hook this time. That's a nice fish right there. You know, this fish actually came on the stinger hook and that's why we have the stinger hook there, just right in the beak. That fish was not gonna come off. We're fishing a little bit deeper water and we're fighting them slow. Uh, we're gonna keep a couple fish just for a fish fry here later, but we're putting the majority of the fish back. And if you fight these fish nice and slow in this deep water, they normally release pretty well. Now you can see in this situation, this fish's swim bladder actually popped. So he's not gonna go back and that's okay because we can keep a couple for the fish fry. You talk about an eater sized fish, that's the perfect one right there. And we'll put him in the tank. So they're feeding on crawdads, crayfish, otherwise known as crawfish. And uh, pretty good diet they have. You know, they grow pretty good sized here. A little lower in the Columbia, they get a lot bigger because they have more food. So they have a shad run down there. They have a lot more smolts. Um, and we don't have a ladder with these two dams. So we don't get a lot of, uh, smolt production in this area. So that's why they get them a little bit bigger down there in Tri-Cities. Uh, but these are quality fish and I'm happy to get them. Big, big mouth coming up. Oh, on a jig rod, it doesn't get much better than that right there. Look at that. You can see that uh, they're very hungry. So what we're fishing with is a crawdad imitation. And, uh, and so it has you know that crawdad imitation look and um, they're feeding on those pretty heavily right now so uh, it's uh, it's a fun way to get them right there a little football head jig and, and a crawdad imitation with a stinger hook we haven't needed the stinger hooks today we haven't needed them they're just engulfing these baits you know, I want Austin to talk about the, the advantages and disadvantages of vertical jigging versus casting in this application. Because the area that we're fishing on the river right now, you absolutely could do both. You could vertical jig these fish, or you could cast like we're doing in this situation. So a lot of the guys in this area, they vertical jig. And that can be very effective as well. But for me, I do a lot better uh, casting these jigs. We're fan casting as we work our way down through the water. And what that does is it covers more ground in each pass that we're doing and uh, by having our line angles out there at a steeper angle that uh, crawfish imitation looks more lifelike and uh, the fish seem to you know they trigger better on that um, that's for me uh, and definitely you can catch them vertically jigging but we're steadily out producing a lot of the guys in this area with this presentation this one feels like a pretty good fish and uh, 
you know, we're just working this edge. These fish are just right under the boat right now. We're in 30 feet of water. Uh, we, our last pass, we drifted down about 38 feet of water and we caught a couple of smaller fish. So we, uh, we worked our way up onto the flat and this is where we've been catching these little bit bigger fish. I just inhaled that jig too. So she is just about as big around as she is long, it looks like. <laughs> Look at that belly of that girl. That is a healthy fish right there. Yeah. Nice fish. Uh, working, working the shallow edge of the deep water and we're picking them up. Nice fish. You got confused between the bottom and the fish. This one, I don't know if he's hooked funny, Austin, but he's fighting hard. I just had a little too much bow in my line in that situation. I wasn't, I wasn't a nice tight there, so I, it was hard to tell where I was. A nice fish. Nice. Good job, dude. That's a beautiful fish right there. You know, one of the keys to this pitching a jig in a river situation, which is a little bit different than pitching a jig with no current at all. And you're basically, it's almost like mending line, going back to like a steelhead type mentality. We're casting straight into the current, and then we're working that jig down the current. And what you're looking for or feeling for is just that little tick, that lead head jig just kind of ticking on the bottom, a nice tight line to the jig. In this situation, is a little too much bow on the line, but all river jig pitching is the same, trying to keep that nice tight line in good contact with the bottom. You'll catch a pile of fish. Special considerations are provided by Cisco Fishing Systems and Striker Brands. Go early, go late, go prepared. Special considerations provided by Fishhawk Electronics and Daiwa Corporation. Eagle Claw presents the 411 on fishing. You know, in Fishing 411, we fish a plug called the Maglip an awful lot. We've used it to catch just about everything you can imagine Chinook, coho, lake trout, walleye. We catch a lot of different fish on it, and we get a lot of questions about what are our favorite colors of maglev. And it gets confusing because they come in over 50 different color shades. They're all good fish catchers. But if you want to nail that down to two or three colors you just can't live without, let me help you out here. The first one I would suggest is something called Grinch. This Grinch catches everything. It's literally our go-to color. As you can see, it's a lot of chrome with a little bit of chartreuse and a little bit of green, and those are deadly colors for all different kinds of species. The other one that I can't live without is something called Gold Metallic Flame. And this is a lake trout killer, but the walleyes really love it. We catch brown trout on it. It's just a solid color everywhere we take it. And the third one I just can't live without is another chrome bait with a little red highlight on it. It's called NFL. And NFL has done a magnificent job of catching those coho, steelhead, walleye, you name it. Those three colors are gonna catch you fish on the maglip no matter where you take them, east coast, west coast, or any place in between. All right, so the same thing that Jake just did happened to me. As we're drifting down through the current, that fish sucked it in and I never even felt it. And I set the hook and we got some wiggle out of it. Another small walleye. Where are all the big girls at? I want to show you guys some big girls. I'll just let you swing that one in. and. That'll be perfect one for your lunch there too. Yeah, that is about the right size, ain't it? So, in this case, on this one, the stinger hook is the one that got them. I run a lot of guide trips and I fish a lot of anglers that aren't as experienced and those trailer hooks really come into play for me uh, with the less experienced people not feeling the bite. It gives them just a split second longer to set that hook, so. Nice little one, I think we're gonna put this one in the box. Here where I'm fishing, I'm trying to kind of match the hatch. There's a lot of crawdads in this section of the river, and uh, we, we catch these trout and we catch these walleye all the time and they're puking up crawdads. So um, basically I'm trying to match the hatch with this presentation and this is more of a typical bass type presentation but the walleye love it too. They're, they're foraging on the same things and uh, I like a little football head and, and I do that because it kind of stands up as I lift it. It kind of helps to keep my baits um, more uh, vertical as I lift them off the bottom. So football head works really well for me. 
the uh, stinger hook on there, I, I space it out so it's just right at the end of the crawdad legs. And so when the, those light biting fish come up to try to get that uh, jig, they're gonna get that trailing hook. Uh, we haven't had a lot of light biters today though. They've been uh, crushing it. So, yep, just a half ounce football head jig with a crawdad imitation. It's been working well. That was all the way to the back. I mean, it's completely swung behind the back of the boat. Uh, it's just about ready to reel up and make another cast. There he was. I think it feels pretty good. In fact, I'm actually going to swing to the back corner here just a little bit. See if I can get him around the corner of the boat. It feels pretty heavy though. Oh yeah, that's a nice fish. Just lightly hooked there on the stinger hook. Nice. Nice fish. That is a beautiful fish right there. You know, one of the things that I think is cool to talk about is Austin was telling me when we were on our way out here that he was catching these fish in 25 to 40 feet of water using a half ounce jig. And in my mind, that's a fairly light jig, especially in 40 feet of water. But what I'm quickly learning out here and what Austin's been kind enough to, to share with me is a lighter jig is actually important because what's happening is as we make that cast, you want that lighter jig to be able to sweep the current. Too heavy of a jig and you can't get that sweep. So a little bit lighter jig, naturally flows down the current, you're getting more of a natural presentation in that situation. It's been very interesting to me because in my application, 40 feet of water, I would just instantly think a little bit heavier jig. So if you're in a situation where you're casting in a river environment, maybe look at a little bit lighter jig to be able to sweep that current and create more of a natural presentation down there. Catch a pile of these fish. Special considerations are provided by Precision Trolling Data and the Lake St. Clair Walleye Association. Special considerations provided by the Ultimate Sport Show Tour, Michigan's Elite Sport Shows. We make these long casts, and that's what you know. I talk about braided line and how important that is. You can't have any stretch in the line if you want to keep these fish licked. It's hard enough to keep a hook in them as it is. Let's see, I'm gonna if I can get an idea where he's at there. I want to have Austin do the network for me. I love doing a little networking. Thanks, buddy. That's the perfect type of networking right That's there. That's right. I hashtag that sometimes, networking. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good one. Pretty heavy fish. Ooh, That's a nice one. Oh, That's yeah. That's a good looking fish That's right a good there. fish there, Austin. Scoop him for me, buddy. <laughs> nice job, Jake. <laughs> Look at these fish, man. We have had a riot catching a pile of these today. Just thick, healthy, healthy fish. You know, we've caught a couple which I would consider big walleyes anywhere you go. We haven't put our hands on a giant, but the average fish that we've caught today, Austin, has been great. Thick, healthy, healthy fish. Doing it with a jig rod, which is my favorite way to catch a walleye. You know, my dad makes fun of me. He says, Jake, every time you catch a walleye, you say that's your favorite way, and that's true. But I, I'm telling you, a jig rod in my hand, I'm a happy man. This is a bigger fish. This is probably more of what we've been looking for. And uh, she is taking line. <laughs> big throbbing head shakes, which is indicative of a big walleye. <laughs> that is a big fish, buddy. That's the one we're looking for right there. Look at the belly on that thing. She's a fatty. I was really hoping to show you guys one of these. A little That's closer. A good one Reach out. Austin, look at this fish, man. <laughs> Holy cow. Now that, that is what the Columbia River is all about, man. That is so cool. Oh, yeah. These pre-spawn walleyes, they're so thick in the shoulders. You know, we talk about it before, but that hump right there, you know, when they start getting that flat forehead, you know, they're getting big. Thick, big mama. So we're gonna put her back, let her do her spawning. But I'm so glad she came in the boat and got to say hi, man. That is so cool. Okay, so the dam behind me here is Grand Coulee Dam. And uh, it is a hydroelectric dam. It's one of the largest hydroelectric dams in the United States. And it holds back the water that's coming from Canada in the Columbia River. It's 155 miles long, Lake Roosevelt is. And basically, Grand Coulee Dam holds back all that water, which in turn is the battery for all the other hydroelectric 
dams below us down to the ocean. There's a bunch of hydroelectric dams um, that, that go on down to the ocean. I don't know the exact number, I can't remember, but it's something like 20 dams. Uh, it, it's, uh, it's pretty awesome. Um, it holds back all that water and so it creates a bunch of power when it's, when it's dumping the water and then in turn every dam below that creates power off of what they're releasing. So they call it the battery of the Columbia River and uh, it's, it's a pretty, uh, pretty awesome dam. It's, it's one of the largest in the world. This fish just absolutely pile drived it. I hear turkeys gobbling in the background. Solid tonkin line. You know it's spring when you're hearing the turkeys gobble and the walleyes are biting. Austin, would you do me the favor this time? I'll go ahead and net your fish. I'm getting time. a little tired of netting your fish, I'm gonna be honest with you, so. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I'll do that for you. Austin, this is a good one here. Is it? Good. This is what we're looking for. This is a good oh, fish. Yeah, that's right a good here. One. Wow. You can see him that. coming up from so long. Nice fish. That is a good fish. <laughs> Austin. Man, look at this. This has been a riot today. I really appreciate you showing me the Columbia River, showing me your home water. You know, we travel a long ways to get out here, but I appreciate you sharing everything with me today. Yeah, man, so much fun. Thank you guys for coming over here and seeing the Columbia River and what it has to offer. Absolute beautiful country here and lots and lots of walleye. Hey, my name is Jake Romanak. You've been watching Fishing 411. We'll see you here same time, same place next week. Let's get these fish back. There we go. Closed captioning is provided by Lakeside Motorsports, Michigan's premier marine and power sports company. Fishing 411 is brought to you by Offshore Tackle, Lorenz Electronics, Starcraft Marine, Yamaha Outboards, Yakima Bait Company, Niagara Falls, USA, Smooth Moves, Bill Lewis Lures, and Jay's Sporting Goods. Healthy, healthy fish, doing it with a jig rod, which is my favorite way to catch a walleye. You know, my dad makes fun of me. He says, Jake, every time you catch a walleye, you say that's your favorite way, and that's true. But I, I'm telling you, a jig rod in my hand, I'm a happy man.